I'm gonna show you the best archetype in Metaphor Refantasio and how to get super OP early. I'm about 25 hours in now and I've been clearing every bit of content honestly with ease using this specific build. I'll explain the strategy behind this build and where to find some strong weapons for you to use very early a little bit later, but for now I want to start by explaining my thought process and why I think this is the best build. Now with Persona games, it's kind of like a known fact that you want to exploit the enemy's weakness and I try to transfer that over into Metaphor. I played the demo two different times. The first time I attempted to have all the elements on my team, I used the mage and I tried to exploit the enemy weaknesses and take advantage of that. I was able to clear most of the demo successfully and then the optional dungeon was a little bit hard just because you're not supposed to take mages in there, but it took me way longer than it needed to because the second go around, the class that I played with was a warrior and I spec strength and I just flew through every ounce of content and that trend has continued as I leave the early game and start to approach the mid game. Now I will say that I think this is the best archetype for the early game and as we get to some of the more advanced classes obviously there's going to be better builds that come about but this is something that's going to allow you to get super strong early and you don't have to wait you know 20-30 hours in before you can actually play this build. You can play it pretty much from the start of the game. Now I was getting to a little bit earlier but I kind of deviated but for Persona games, the main character is able to swap between his different personas, so you can really exploit any weakness you want as long as you have the persona attached, so it was a pretty easy setup to do that. With Metaphor, you can't switch, so you're locked into the class that you get, so playing Mage is really one of the only ways to hit all of the elemental weaknesses. Now when it comes to the Warrior, we can straight up brute force things. Now on the base kit, we have the Heat Up passive, which is going to give us a 10% attack increase, and that's going to go even further if we have archetypes of the same lineage equipped. And then we have the slash boost, which is going to be a 20% increase for slash damage. Now we are going to have multiple archetypes of the same lineage equipped, so we're going to be taking advantage of this heat up. But the reason we're going to do this in the star of this entire build is going to be the bamboo splitter. By having two warriors in your party, you're able to access this and it costs six mana each, but you're going to do heavy physical slash damage. And the big thing is that if you do the killing blow, you're going to add an additional turn icon. There are very few mobs that can withstand this hit, so you're going to be getting that extra turn almost guaranteed as you're just slicing through enemies with ease like, hey, like butter. <laughs> and then we have the Peerless Stone Cleaver, which is pretty much the same thing, but it's usable if you have three warriors equipped. So majority of the game, I played all three characters on warrior until I got the fourth person, but we'll get into that later. And so I was able to do Bamboo Splitter over and over and over, and then just continuously have different groups to do it with to keep reserving my mana. So essentially, if you kill the mob, you're gonna get three different attacks. Two of them are gonna be able to be bamboo splitters, and then the last one, you can do something like a diagonal slash, or you can auto attack if you wanna conserve MP. Now, what pushes this build even further is you have access to get super strong weapons for free very early in the game. If you've played the demo, you may have already passed this, but if you're freshly starting, there's gonna be a point where there's a dragon and they ask you to sneak around it. It makes it seem like you can't kill this dragon, but you actually can, and if you do, it's gonna drop an extremely strong weapon for the warrior class. Now, the key to beating this dragon early is that when you go into the fight just before, there's gonna be a merchant that sells items, and the dragon is gonna have a weakness to ice. So if you stack up on the item that deals ice damage, you're gonna be able to exploit the weakness and get up to six turns every time guaranteed. And so you get those, you go into the battle, you throw the ice chunks three times with all three characters, and then you attack or you throw more ice chunks the next three times. You should be able to take down the dragon with a little bit of finesse and then unlock that weapon. Now the next free weapon you get is going to come after you clear the final dungeon in the demo and for those of you that aren't familiar this is the dungeon that's within the cathedral. After you clear that you're going to have access to do several different things and one of them is going to be taking on a bounty which the game is going to kind of push you towards to explain the bounty system to you. Now the bounty that you're going to get this weapon on is going to be the Man Eater Manjula and this, you're not even going to have to fight the bounty. This is just going to be a treasure within the open world. So you want to make sure that after you clear the bounty or before, if you want a power increase going into that, you find the treasure, which is going to be right here. I'm sorry I wasn't able to zoom out into the map and show you exactly where it is, but I do have this little icon here. I wasn't anticipating making the video at the time of finding this weapon. I was just kind of recording my gameplay. But this is going to be a second weapon on par with the weapon you got that was dropped from the dragon that you're going to get for free without any type of combat. We're going to get into the strategy now, but before we do, I really would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and help me get this video to 100 likes. 
This is one of few guides that I'm going to be dropping on Metaphor Refantasio in the next few days. You're not going to want to miss it, but now let's discuss the strategy of this build. So I went through all of the abilities in the synthesis earlier, so you know Bamboo Splitter is going to be your bread and butter, but I wanted to get into a few other things, and this strategy is really going to come into play when you're going up against bosses that you're not able to one-tap. At the beginning of the game, you only have three characters, and for pretty much all of my party, I invested in the Seeker archetype, so that way I can inherit abilities. On all of my warriors, I have the Tarukaja ability, so that way I can increase an ally's attack for three turns. And I went ahead and invested in the Seeker and got it to rank four, so that way I had access to this on all of my characters. I didn't necessarily run the Seeker to level up, I just used the hero incestes so that way I can level them up without actually playing on the class. And so the thought process behind that is I can have this and I can buff up the character that I have my dragon weapon equipped to three times in one turn, let the enemy go, and then when it's my turn again, I have a fully cracked out character that I can do either a bamboo splitter on or I can do the ability where I take all three of my turn icons to dish out heavy damage. With this strategy, I've been able to almost effectively kill every boss in about two hits. Now, some of the fights do get dragged out a little bit, but that's my thought process and thinking behind this build. And then the second inherited ability, really you can get whatever. I was initially saving it for a defensive buff when I got it from, I believe the Faker archetype has it. But what I did was I got different elemental abilities, which I'll get into next. But another thing that I wanted to point out of what I'm planning to do is I got the commander archetypes unlocked. And I looked at his abilities and I see we have an ally defense increase for three turns. But more importantly, we have the formation of Viger. Vigor, Viger, I don't know. <laughs> but I'm able to move all allies to the front row and increase their attack by two ranks for three turns. So essentially, I'm able to take that same strategy and do it for all of the characters and give all of the characters a massive attack boost as opposed to just one character. So this is something I'm going to invest in a little bit later as I move into the next strategy going into mid and end game with this team. I don't know that I'm going to have this as an inherited ability on all characters, maybe just one or two so that way I can quickly get the three buff, but I'm going to definitely have it as an inherited ability and not run the commander archetype. I'll probably put it on my Hulkenberg and then I'm not sure which character I'll put it on next. Now the next part of this strategy is going to be what do you do when enemies have repellents to the type of physical slash damage you're attempting to do? To combat that, I just keep a hefty stock of these elemental items, which I think you should be doing anyways, no matter what party you play, because you're able to dish out 100 of whatever elemental damage to an enemy. And when you're first starting the game and even going into the mid game, being able to do 100 elemental damage and exploit an enemy weakness is going to be huge. But as of now, that's really only been mobs that I might do a bamboo splitter on, get it repelled and one tap myself. I haven't ran into any bosses that are going to make me change my party. Now when I do, I'm definitely going to just probably tweak things a little bit and go with a different synthesis ability as opposed to trying to do the bamboo splitter. But that leads me into my next point, and that's going to be when your party grows to four, you start to do things with the other party member to complement this team's weaknesses. Right now I've done that with Heisme, and he's my only character that I don't have on the warrior archetype. I have him running the gunner sitting in the back rows and just doing physical pierce damage. Now, I may switch him to a mage a little bit later on or use another party member as a mage, just so that way I have something to do to combat that when I have characters or mobs who are repelling all types of physical damage. But just kind of helmet thing I did when I first got Heisme was throwing the gunner on him. Now, doing this can be a little bit mana consuming. And so the thing that I always recommend everyone do, and you should be doing this, like I said, regardless of whatever class you run, is keeping this mage on your team. With the mage, you're able to clear different trash mobs and using the magic recovery passive, you're gonna get your mana points back. For every trash mob that you kill, you're gonna get one mana point back. This is not only gonna help you clear dungeons in one day so you don't have to waste multiple days, but this is just gonna help you stay in those dungeons longer and make sure that mana is not an issue as you're clearing the dungeons. Most dungeons you're going to run into are going to have a point where there's trash mobs in there that you can go to Academia, come back, kill, go to Academia, come back, kill, and continuously farm to get your mana points up. I'm going to talk about this along with other more advanced tips in my beginner's guide a little bit later, but this is something that I felt like I should include here because this party can get a little bit mana intensive as you're progressing longer dungeons. This has been a generational yap session, but I hope this has helped you out even just a little bit. If you're looking for more beginner's tips and tricks for Metaphor Refantasio, I'll have my combat guide right here and be on the lookout in the next few days for more tips. Thank you for your time and I'll catch you in the next one.